What's going on guys? Um, welcome to today's video. Uh, today is a big day. Hopefully the weather cooperates with me. We're putting together the 1ZZ FTE. I want to call it a GTE, but you 2ZZ purists are going to be hating on me like, Oh, the head isn't fully built and it's not high flowing. And, hey, guess what? Who has, fully, who has a fully built head and built it themselves? This guy. So, I think I might just call it the 1ZZ GTE. Because, I mean, it's a lighter engine than the 2ZZ by like a pound or two. It's, it's a little bit lighter. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of fully built from head to toe, guys. <laughs> Well, engine wise. That kind of sounds weird. Anyway, um, so we're ready to get everything together. Luckily, I've found everything that I needed based on what I have from memory. And uh, yeah, let's go over real quick the last few minute things we need to do. So, once again, thank you, Mother, for having me over here in my workspace. It was basically my own shop. But um, I'm very thankful for letting me do this inside because I don't have a garage. So, and obviously the weather hasn't been really cooperating lately, it's been raining a lot, so I definitely can't have an open engine outside, because it is going to rust, and that is not good. Anyway, um, so here's the engine, the bottom end is basically done, all I need to put in is the oil sump, the little gasket that goes here, and then put the oil pen and done. And uh, before we actually do that though, uh, I need to tap this oil pan because uh, I don't have enough money to get a Moroso one because all of the money went into here So unfortunately I can't get a Moroso oil pan, but definitely in the future I want to get one Moroso if you're watching sponsor me guys, please <laughs> This is a fully built engine my life's work so far but uh, anyway, so I'm gonna be tapping this well not even tapping I just need to drill a hole with uh, one of the little Christmas tree drill bits that's actually big enough for uh, this right here. This is a no weld bung and it comes with uh, some pretty like tight washers that should hold the oil and not leak. So um, just based on the fitment of how this goes on here. So if I remember correctly, which I'm pretty sure I do and based on everything I've learned, this is the side where the intake goes, which is when you're actually like looking in front of the car, it looks like that. This is what holds your axle in place. And since the turbo on this engine is annoying as hell and it's in the back, I have made a few marks. I actually put it right here because that's one of the flatter spots. I think I can do it right here, but the problem is uh, the baffle inside. No, you know what? Actually, I can totally move that over here. That way it's actually a little bit closer to the turbo. Um, I'm actually going to do that right now and just trace it out. And uh, yeah, we're going to get to doing this. and. We're putting the engine together today, so this might be a lengthy video, but oh well, you guys wanted some content, uh, so we're going to give you the good stuff finally. So let's get to it. Alright guys, uh, there's the hole, that was my Mark 1 hole, this is the Mark 2, this is a little bit closer I believe, to where the turbo is going to sit, so just to be sure, um, so I just need to deburr that, and as you guys can see, I grab the phone, no welds, no problem, fits pretty nice and snug, awesome, I'm just going to deburr that hole. Alright, now that the bung is done, um, I'm just, I've never actually opened up my engine stand. Uh, man, this is gonna be a pain in the butt. Well, I need to put this together too. But before I even do any of this, I need to go to the store and grab a few things. I need to go get, uh, longer transmission bolts so I can, uh, basically mount it on there, on the stand with this as a sample. And uh, luckily, I actually ended up finding, luckily I found this, uh, I thought I had lost it, so that's going to go in there. Yeah, come on. So 
So that's gonna go in there, but I still need to go get uh, the little 12 millimeter hex. And then this is gonna thread onto there with the sandwich filter in between. Ah, <sighs> so close guys. I'm also gonna blow out any air on here before I even uh, seal the oil pan. Just so it's, uh, you know, 100% clean. There's probably dust in my little buddy's uh, pimpon. My little buddy's hair in there. Probably not, but I just, I just want to be sure it's completely clean. So yeah. Uh, let's go run those errands and we'll be back. We're going to get the 6 Gen more love in a couple of videos soon. But um, I had to buy this whole freaking set because uh, I still can't find just an individual one. And when you think about it... When you think about it, buying just one socket for 10 bucks that I need makes more sense instead of the whole set. But, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I've wasted enough gas trying to find the freaking socket. So what we have left is looking for longer tranny bolts. I honestly need to go back home and measure like how deep these go into the block. And uh, we picked up the engine hoist. Uh, brand new, it's just an out of box special at Napa. So it's one of the top of the line engine hoists. So thank you my, to my buddy Andy that always helps me out with my car stuff. He helped me remove the engine and disassemble it so using those videos if you guys remember. Um, and by the time this goes up, he's probably in the track one too. Anyway, um, let's go home, check how long those bolts are, make sure that fits that little thing that unites the oil filter to the engine just to be sure we can actually tighten it down and stuff. Let's go. All right, guys, so I'm home. 20 bucks for these freaking sockets. They're high impact, but uh, whatever. I needed that 12 millimeter anyway. And it was, it was like 20 bucks for the whole set. I might as well for future projects. Even though I have only used this one in like this whole entire car, at least the seventh gen, I haven't noticed that there's any other hex ones, but uh, basically I just snug it up, use most of my strength, there's no torque on here, so, like, there's no torque in the manual, at least I couldn't find it. That says how much to torque these down to, so I just basically snugged it up uh, as much as I could. And, uh, that's how it's gonna go in. And then, um, we have this, uh, shoot, sorry for the weird angle, guys. And then we have the MWR oil sandwich filter plate, which, uh, I believe goes in like that. Since the turbo is on this side, I'm pretty sure it should be like that. And then you use the little nut that comes included. That I believe that helps center it. Sorry. And then you can kind of rotate this as you please. I think I'm gonna put put it on like this because uh, then I have access to all the ports at basically every angle because if I straighten it out like this or like that then you know that restricts that one and like this I think I have full access to everything I need so awesome cool and uh, nice little fat uh, seal on this one as well and it looks red and like the car so red or dead guys um but yeah, that's awesome. So I'm going to tighten that down with the bigger socket and I will be back. All right, after so many errands later and uh, my buddy finally showing up, I think I'm finally ready to put this thing together. So at least the bottom end finishing it up. So standard oil sump filter, OEM. And uh, I'm going to put this on as well. I mean, this is, there's really no going wrong with this. This can only go in one place, you guys can see. Right there and right there. And thanks to my organization, when I took this thing apart with my other buddy, it's uh, all in here. So, I believe, yeah, it's all in here. So I'm going to put this on, then I'm going to put the RTB around the oil pan, which has already been, uh, it's already been tapped. 
and uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. All right, so oil sump is on, torque down to 80, 80 inch pounds, right? All right, and uh, we apply the Toyota Fig Pig all the way around. Um, looks like a slight opening right there, but should be fine once uh, you tighten down the oil pan. And I tried to do the best that I could is get it neat and a relatively thick bead all the way around because the last thing I want is this thing to leak oil once i am completely put it together. Doesn't hurt giving it a few extra little tops. Alright, right, guys, so I don't have an ideal environment to put an engine together, but this is the best I got. So I bought a tent. We got the table over there for any hardware we need, and uh, we're, we'll set up the engine stand somewhere over here. But in the meantime, let me not make the mistake I did when I put this when I pulled this thing out. Also, thanks to my buddy for sweeping for me. <laughs> um, so yours truly was once a noob, and I, I still kind of am basically. But uh, I had the hoist the last time against the AC condenser, and it kind of crushed, but. Just the fins, I don't think it should be leaking. It didn't really reach the core, so I learned from my mistake. So I'm gonna take this whole assembly off so I can actually put my upgraded Mishimoto radiator in there too. But today's mission is to get the engine in there, take these old mounts off, and uh, yeah, should be good. Bought a bag to organize these bolts. Um, so replace the front mount. The rear one is actually in pretty good condition, um, like it, like the actual rubber is still really solid. The new one is surprisingly kind of floppy. Granted, they're from Rock Auto, but uh, yeah, see that? There's some play in there. Can't trust it. Yeah, you can't trust it. So uh, we got the upper radiator support off, and uh, yeah, should make the putting the engine in a lot easier. So I mean, after this, I guess we're just gonna put the stand together and bring the block out here and start bolting the head up. You're gonna be back soon. So we got the radiator support out, the condenser and radiator are out. Um, look at this thing, it's so dinky. The stock one is so slim too. My Mishimoto one's like three times that thick. You got the wiring harness? Yeah, it's pretty toasted, nice and toasty. So uh, this is awesome. We're gonna go put the engine crane, not crane. We'll do that later, but we need to get the engine together first. So we're gonna go put that together, the stand. There you go, I had a moment. And luckily the weather's kind of being nice. Like it's not, uh, it's not pouring, it's drizzling. Hopefully it goes away soon because I need to get this thing mounted today. And uh, Saturday, hopefully we'll start it up. So that's like two days from now. But you guys will probably see this in a couple of weeks because I gotta get this stuff ready before school starts, so yeah. So guess who else showed up right now? You can't even see me, I'm dark. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there you go. Oh. Now, right. now you're there. Um. And uh, this is literally the worst thing you could do, or the worst thing that could happen to assemble an engine. Of course, we could have a shop. <laughs> we could garage. have a shop, that'd be nice. But I don't know if you guys can see. Actually, let me switch camera. There's him. And if you guys see, it is freaking pouring outside, which is far from ideal. But uh, we set up the engine stand, and uh, it's, I mean, it's dry. Luckily, because of the umbrella, because the tarp is kind of leaking from some of the seams. So screw you, Walmart. I'm suing. <laughs> but uh, we're going to get these studs in here, and uh, I'm just going to record a time lapse because we need to get this stuff done before you know the iron lining and the bores get messed up and stuff so enjoy the following time lapse guys
Or feel like I'm gonna hold my fiddle adentro to the no, no, crédito. That's my mom right there. She let me build it inside. No diga eso, como no voy a decir eso. Feel like me dejó tenerlo aquí. Um Alright, so now we got the head studs on. I gave him a little bit of a nudge with uh, the Allen key. So we're gonna put the head gasket on. It's nothing special, it's just an OEM gasket. But uh, they held up fine. I mean, plus it's a onesie Z, unfortunately. They don't really sell upgraded ones anymore, but uh, I think I'll be fine. I mean, I've seen people run these up to over 400, so I'm, I'm only running 400 as a goal. If I can get a little bit over, that'd be awesome, but we're just gonna put that on. All right, so the studs are on, the, uh, what, 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 head gasket, the freaking head gasket is on, and we nudged, we nudged all the bolts, um, the cylinders are lubed up with more than enough oil, I'm pretty sure, they're not like overwhelmingly drenched with oil, but, uh, we're gonna pop the head on there now, and, uh, Hope I did the bottom end right. Oh, what, is, what? what did you break? Oh shit! Okay, that's not important. <laughs> oh, that didn't sound good. I just to get my pop yeah, just go ahead and start eating, like in the background of the other video. Pop tarts give you more horsepower. <laughs> like in the <laughs> exhaust video. <laughs> Wait, how? What? What do you mean? Or was it the? We I mean, went to the mountains that one time. Yeah, I was in the mountains yeah, when you were over here like eating chips. <laughs> it wasn't even chips, it was the same things you got when we went to to the race. I, I would consider oh I would consider them chips.
Are you good? You didn't even do anything? Huh? guys well the head is on there um, it's not torqued down yet there's the ARP uh, studs so we're gonna put the washers in and these and we're gonna torque them down to uh, crap where's the paper this one? That's wet. the one that's wet we probably should record the instructions before they completely disappear all right so 55 foot pounds uh, using the torque sequence that Toyota says. So, we already got the lube on there as well, so you guys can see. And plenty and plenty of assembly lube. I'm still probably going to put a little bit more around the buckets just to be sure there isn't friction or anything. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. So we had to make a quick run luckily. It's like, uh, what time is it right now? It's like almost nine o'clock. And uh, for these new ARP studs, they come with nuts that are like 12 millimeters, which, and it's a 12 point and I didn't have unfortunately. So got it. Uh, and hopefully we don't need any more tools cause then my engine's staying outside, I guess. Fuck. What about my free parkour? You're doing back there, guy. I can't zoom in. Oh. I can't zoom in, but you're still eating. I was gonna say because I mean it looked like it went that way. It's okay to be honest with you. Both sides is confusing because you don't. Is it that way? No, it has to go this way, dude. Yeah, it should go that way. And there's no way the timing goes down here. I get this is the oil pump, the oil oil section. The oil yeah, but this is the flywheel. Oh shit, dude! Did we put the helm backwards? No. Dude, I think we did. Dude. <laughs> the dude, I think we <laughs> fucking did. No Wait. fucking way. Please tell dude, me. Dude, I think we did. How the <laughs> fuck? It is on backwards, dude. I'm looking at it. That's what I was looking at earlier. I'm like, yo. Yeah, this is the timing size. <laughs> dude, what the fuck? Oh, shit. It's okay. It's just the head is not too bad, though. Yeah, but the gasket. Is it OEM? Yes. Fucking AutoZone? 
No, I'm pretty sure I can reuse it. You sure? Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure you can I mean, reuse it's been not, it. It hasn't even been combusted yeah. or anything. Okay. I was very sure it does. No, hold on. I'm thinking, dude, because we already torqued it down. Are the pistons? Huh? Which way did you put the pistons in? They were supposed to be going towards the intake side, which... So... This way? Yes. So are they facing this way? I don't even fucking remember right now, dude. Whoa, if we take the head off, we can see the pistons anyways. What if it's all the way? Fuck. Oh. Fucking pop the bottom part off and switch them around. Yeah, but that's gonna take time because this shit's RTV already on there. Fuck!
pop. Oh, was that the ratchet? Yeah, that's how it's ratchet. Did you think you broke it? It sounded like I broke it. No, that sounded like the ratchet. That's the ratchet. That's oh, probably the valves, dude. Oh, yeah, the valves. <laughs> what? Oh no, it's happening first. Fuck. Take it off. Thank you.